So a while back, I was discipling and mentoring a young man in ministry, and he was in seminary at the time. And so when he would come back from seminary classes, I'd always pick his brain. Hey, what did you learn? Uh, part of that is because I probably didn't learn all I should have the first time around. The other part of that is, hey, how can I coach you and help you think about different things or piece some things together? One day he came back to the office and I said, hey man, anything you learned interesting today at school? And he said, I'm still trying to get over a simple and searing question that one of our professors asked us. And I'm like, ooh, do tell, do tell. And he said, he asked us this, if God answered every prayer this last month that you have prayed, how many people would be saved because of your prayer life? Now I have to admit to you, a pet peeve of mine is when I ask questions and someone says, huh? Or what did you say? When they obviously know good and well what you just said, they're just stalling for more time to respond. My kids are masters at this. Hey, did you clean your room up like I asked you? Huh? What'd you say? Sweetheart, this is the fourth time I've asked you to not bring your device to the table. Huh? What'd you say? I'll give you one guess what my response was to that question. Huh? What did you say? He said he asked us, if God answered every prayer that you have prayed this last month, how many people would be in the kingdom of God because of your prayer life? And I got up, I went to the office, I shut my door, and I began to weep and pray to the Lord of the harvest because I had realized that is an area in my life that I had neglected. I had been so consumed with family concerns and personal concerns and ministry concerns that I had neglected to consistently and strategically pray to the Lord of the harvest for workers and for the harvest. Now, the reason I share that with you this morning is not so that you go home and are filled with anxiety and fear and legalistically read out loud 1,000 names every morning. Uh, I don't think that's the intention. The other side of it, too, is prayer is not an excuse for us not to live sent. And living sent is not an excuse for us not to pray. Both those things are difficult, and sometimes we choose one over the other, but I wonder what it would look like this morning if we as a church made both of those things not optional, but necessary to living out the mission and message of Jesus. And it's easy though, right? It's easy to get distracted. I don't know where you're at in your season of life, but sometimes I just feel like I'm doing all I can to keep my head above water clinging onto a life raft. And real quickly, I can ignore all those people who are drowning around me. And Jesus has to remind us that he has one main mission. That he's asked us to make disciples that make disciples. And too soon we become distracted, not only by bad things, but sometimes good things and sometimes church things. And we neglect to pray to the Lord of the harvest and go into the Lord of the harvest fields, reaping what he is sowing. 